Uh, this is Bethany Ashton reporting for the Finding Frida interview series. I'm here with Julie today of Noble Sands, and we're going to learn a little bit more about Julie's backstory and what compelled her to create her own innovative brand. Thank you for joining me, Julie. Thank you for having me. I would um, I'd first love to know about um, the support network that you had as a child growing up. Were there many women in your family or network? Um, who were able to give you advice as a child. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was lucky enough to be around um, a mom and a grandmother who both were supportive in terms of being creative, in terms of learning life skills like cooking and making clothes and um, gardening and things like that. And so, um, yeah, they were, they were there and teaching me very important life skills. Well, how old were you when you came to uh, the realization that you wanted to create a brand for yourself? Um, well, as a child, I, you know, I thought about it, but, uh, I, I definitely went in a different direction um, other than creating a brand for myself. And then uh, the creative side of me never really went away. Uh, and so I accidentally created my product when I um, was looking for something that I couldn't find and it allowed that creativity to, to flow again. Um, and so I, got a piece of scrap fabric and started draping it on myself and came up with our product. And were the women from your childhood involved in that process? Were you able to reconnect with them? Um, were they able to support? Uh, yeah, unfortunately not because I I wasn't living in the same area and my, my and also my, my grandmother passed away when um, I was about 12 or 13 years old. So, um, I, I was living far away from my mom at the time, but uh, she's she's very excited about it. She's excited to see um, the creative side that she didn't necessarily get to pursue. Um, you know, I I'm able to do that now. And did you did you study anything that that helped you? Um, you know, in the garment industry, did it help you with uh, with fashion design or uh, fashion construction? Um, not formally, you know, um, again, my, my mom, um, taught me how to make clothes when I was younger from patterns, um, just store-bought patterns. Um, but I recognized like the shape of things, um, and how things drape. And so when I was, uh, trying to create what I wanted for myself, I, I, knew kind of what type of fabric to look for um and i was my own mannequin <laughs> which is draping it on myself so um ne never any formal study but just always i always was observing um what was around me in terms of fashion and um and classic styles i liked things that were always um not necessarily so trendy so i really appreciate uh, designers like halston and uh, a lot of the designers from the 70s where they really just draped the fabric beautifully and yeah that that was a good influence on me yeah and what were some of your resources um did you use youtube a lot were you searching textbooks uh patterns None of it, really. Uh, I I just had in my mind what I wanted to create, um, and I I'm not a very good artist, but I attempted to kind of sketch out what I was thinking about. But really, it was all in my head. It was easier for me to <clears throat> to try and cut what I saw in my head out on a piece of fabric than it was to actually try and sketch it. So um, it was just trial and error really. Um, and and here we are. I've kind of gone in reverse um, of the typical process. So when I was looking for um, production companies to work with, 
I walked in with my quote unquote prototype and they asked for the pattern and I said, I don't have one. <laughs> and they said, how is that possible? And I said, well, I just created it. So we had to reverse engineer everything to create the pattern and then go into production. So yeah, I haven't done anything very uh, traditional, so to say. <laughs> Yeah, and, and with the support from your production partners, um, did you find that support with them or were they kind of frustrated about that? No, I don't think they were frustrated. I think they were more surprised, you know. Um, the, the, our signature product is quite simple um, in terms of, of pieces. It's, it's, it's primarily one, one piece of fabric, but... Um, you know, I, I just knew enough um, to to use the measuring tape. And um, so I guess it was part of, partial luck and then maybe partial memory from having done it so long ago. But um, no, they weren't, they weren't really frustrated. They were more just kind of like, how did you do that? <laughs> so. Well, situation. <laughs> Uh, and as a female business owner, have you, uh, what kind of networks are you involved in? Where do you find support, collaborative opportunities? Can you name some of the female networks? Um, yes, absolutely. So, and that's been um, a critical part of this whole process um, because I, this is, my first time as an entrepreneur um and i was i'm also living in a place where i didn't know a lot of people um and so i am building i've built everything literally from scratch um from sourcing the materials to finding production partners to um now trying to build some sort of a business network so um it's just been by luck really that i found um a one group called the business relationship alliance also known as the bra network um uh, the quench collective is another one um the creative career club is another one um the uh, collaboration coalition is another one um the Females Founder Collective is another one. And so it's all been pretty amazing, um, even though during this time where we are so far apart from one another, somehow these groups have, I feel like made everybody a little bit closer and a, a bit more open to being um, accessible and supportive, um, just like yourself. I mean, this this is amazing that we've been able to connect, and um, and I think it's necessary, and I think it's making people realize just what an important part of the connection and having these relationships is for not only business but just in your everyday life. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, and what women are capable of. I mean, our EQ is what has connected us during. The last nine months, um, and uh, so I feel that we're yeah we're seeing a lot of strength and a lot of really innovative leaders um, shine right now. It's exciting. Uh, Absolutely. I to close our interview, Julie. I would love to know if you were able to take a step back in time to your childhood and ask any one of those women that supported you. Um, a question that could prepare you for your future um, in a male-female society, what would that question be? Oh gosh. Um, I think I, I, I think back to my my Italian grandmother who really had a lot of her traditions um, just embedded in everything that she did. And I got to witness that, um, her cooking, her, her creativity, her artwork. Um, I think I would just ask like, how do you want this to be carried on? Mm -hmm. um, I was young 
when she passed away. So I didn't think to, to ask those questions, but I think I would ask her, what would you like to see carried on? And what's, what's important to you? What do you want your legacy to be? Yeah. Thank you so much, Julie. It's been a pleasure to talk to you on the Finding Thank Freedom you. It's been a pleasure talking with you too. I appreciate it.